Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. A big shout out to the person that suggested this, and a big shout out to the people that have subscribed and did subscribe. Thank you very much. I hope you guys are doing all right, and may you stay blessed. So today we're going to be reacting to the true history of Jesus and his family. Without wasting time, let's get into the video. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome all viewers. Today I want to talk about Jesus, or as we Muslims say, Isa alayhi salam, peace be upon him. And this is such a historic figure. Human beings are very divided regarding him. Who was he? What did he teach? But there's no doubt that the impact that he has had on the world has been tremendous. But one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, that we must keep in mind as humans is when we are presented some information, particularly about our Creator, about God, about prophets who communicated with God and were given revelation, we need to know that the information that is being presented is authentic, is trustworthy. So today I just want to share some of what is found in the Quran and what has been supported by the authentic Sunnah, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. because many people they may not know how much Isa and his mother Maryam may Allah's peace be upon them, are talked about in the Qur'an. For example, today, I'm just going to quote some of the stories and information that is found in three chapters of the Qur'an. One is called Surah Al-Imran. It's the third chapter of the Qur'an, and it is talking about the family of Isa, alayhi salam. Then there is also a Another surah, the fifth surah, the fifth chapter of the Quran called Surah Al-Ma'idah where Isa and his miracles and conversations between him and Allah on the Day of Judgment are presented to us. And then there is also, of course, the 19th chapter, chapter Maryam, talking about Isa's mother. So throughout the Quran, we find a lot of information about Isa, who he truly was, what really happened. And um, as we know, the Quran has been authentically preserved. It's very, it's trustworthy. So I wanted to share some of that information with you today. I wanted to just really, as briefly as possible, summarize it because it's very fascinating information and this is such a worthwhile topic to discuss. So firstly, I want to go to that third chapter, Al-Imran. And... This chapter, Al-Imran, it means the family of Imran. So who was Imran? Who was this individual? Who was his family? So Imran was the father of Maryam. Maryam was the mother of Isa, Jesus. Also within this family tree, we have the prophet Zachariah, who was a caretaker of Maryam. And it's also said that he was married to Miriam's sister. And they had a baby, Zachariah and his wife, who was also a prophet, Prophet Yahya. So Isa and Yahya were maternal cousins. And the fact that they were maternal cousins, this is found in Sahih Bukhari. This is authentic information. So that just gives you a glimpse at this family, the family of Imran. A very righteous family. They were known for their ibadah, worshiping Allah, their Lord, being righteous. And as you can see, a family with prophets, a family that experienced miracles. So if we start with Imran himself, we will talk about his wife. When she became pregnant, she made a oath, a vow to Allah that the baby that was in her womb would be dedicated to his service. So when the wife of Imran was blessed with this baby girl, she named her Maryam, and she sought refuge with Allah for her daughter and her daughter's offspring from Shaitan. 
And Allah accepted this from her. Allah accepted her vow, her oath to dedicate this child to his service. And Allah also accepted this dua, this prayer that he protect her and her offspring from shaitan. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he affirms this in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where he tells us that every child that is born is touched by shaitan and they scream as a result except Maryam and her child Asa. So as we can see the family of Imran, Maryam's mother, we're talking about very righteous people. She vowed to dedicate her child to Allah. And this was the reputation that the family of Imran had. So this being the case, Maryam was born and to fulfill that vow, she dedicated her life to serving Allah. And it was the will of Allah that the prophet Zachariah would be her caretaker. He would be the one to come and overlook her affairs, make sure that she was taken care of. But when prophet Zachariah would come to check up on Maryam, he would find that she had sustenance with her. And he would ask, Maryam, where are you getting the sustenance? To which Maryam said, it's from my Lord. He provides sustenance for whoever he wills without measure. Allah gives whatever he wants to whoever he wants, however much he wants. And it is very easy for Allah to do whatever it is that he wants to do. So Prophet Zakaria, knowing the reality of this, that Allah can give whatever he wants to whoever he wants, whenever he wants, Prophet Zakaria made dua. He asked Allah to provide him with a righteous offspring. And shortly afterward, the angels, they gave Prophet Zakaria glad tidings of a child who would be a prophet named Yahya. And as a side note, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, made the Mi'raj, when he ascended to the heavens, when he got to the second heaven, he met Prophet Isa and Prophet Yahya. And he specifically mentions in this hadith that they were maternal cousins. So this was the situation with Maryam. She worshipped Allah. She dedicated her life to serving him. And eventually the angels came to her and gave her glad tidings that Allah chose her. Chose her for what? To give birth to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. The Messiah who would be honored in this world and in the hereafter and who would have a very close place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So of course, Maryam, she is surprised by this asking, how can I give birth to a child when no man has touched me? But of course, Allah does as He pleases. Allah says, be, and it is. So when Maryam became pregnant, she went out and she withdrew to a faraway place to give birth to Isa alayhi salam. And of course, a time came after giving birth where she needed to return to her people. So, subhanAllah, think about the situation. Maryam, she comes from such a righteous family. She dedicated her life to serving Allah, and now all of a sudden she gave birth to a baby. And everyone knows that she's not married. How can she give birth to a baby? So when Maryam returns to her people holding Isa, holding this newborn baby, they are amazed. They're shocked. They tell her, this is a mighty, tremendous, unprecedented thing. You come from a very righteous lineage. Your father was not an adulterer. Your mother was not an unchaste woman. So they want Maryam to explain herself. What does Maryam do? She points to the baby. She points to baby Isa alayhi salam. And the people are like, how, how are we going to talk to a baby? How do you expect us to get any information from a newborn baby? Newborns can't speak. All that they do is they, they cry, that's it. But what happened next? Isa alayhi salam, as a baby in the cradle, he spoke to the people. He said, I am a slave of Allah. Allah gave me the scripture and he made me a prophet. Baby Isa said, he's made me blessed wheresoever I be and has enjoined upon me prayer and zakat, giving charity and being dutiful to my mother as long as I live. And he has made me not to be arrogant or unblessed and salam, peace be upon me the day I was born, the day I will die and the day that I will be given life again. So SubhanAllah, what an amazing account that we have in the Quran about the family of Isa alayhi salam, about his grandmother who made an oath to dedicate her daughter to the service of Allah and about how Allah accepted that oath and had her give birth to Maryam. And then Maryam, she grew up righteous, worshiping Allah under the 
guardianship of Prophet Zechariah, Prophet Zechariah, the father of Prophet Yahya, and how the angels came to Maryam and told her about how she would give birth, even though she had not been with a man before, and how when she withdrew from her people and gave birth and then returned to them, how they were shocked and accused her, and how Prophet Isa salam, as a baby proclaimed his prophethood and showed the innocence of his mother. Furthermore, in the Quran, Allah tells us about how Isa salam, used to perform miracles, how Allah blessed him to speak in the cradle and also as he got mature and he grew, he performed miracles for the people. How by the permission of Allah, he could take clay and form it into the shape of a bird and breathe life into it. How he could give sight to the blind, life to the dead, how he could cure the leper. All these miracles he was able to perform as a prophet by the permission of his Lord, Allah. And Allah also tells us about how he guided the disciples of Isa to believe in him and to believe in his messenger and to bear witness that they were Muslims. They were those who submitted to Allah, their Lord. And finally, the Quran clearly addresses some of the controversy, some of the disputes that people have today about who Isa alayhi salam was. Allah informs us of a conversation that will take place on the day of resurrection, the day of judgment, where he will ask Isa, did you tell people to worship you, to take you as a God besides Allah? And Isa will proclaim, no glory be to you, I only told them to worship you. You are my Lord, you are their Lord. If I ever said such a thing, surely you would know it. You know what is in my inner self, and I do not know what is in your inner self. Truly, you, only you, are the all-knower of the unseen. So this is just some of what is mentioned in the Quran and authentic sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So knowing all of this information is very important that we have the proper view when it comes to Isa alayhi salam. That we don't go to the two extremes that we find some people going to. The one extreme of people disbelieving in Isa altogether, saying he wasn't a prophet. During his time, there were people who claimed that he, it was just magic. All the things that were going on, it was just clear magic. They disbelieved in him. People today disbelieve in him. And then we have the other extreme where people raise Isa alayhi salam above his position. They worship him. They say that he was much more than a prophet, much more than a messenger, that he is God or the son of God. People pray to him. People devote acts of worship to him, which he never told anyone to do. So may Allah give us the true balanced view that he was a righteous prophet, a beloved messenger of Allah. But the reality is there is no true God. There is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone. The God of Isa, the creator of Isa, and all of us and all that exists, Jazakum Allahu Khairan, Allah knows best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. At the end of the day, uh, only one God exists. That's what we should understand. But then if you don't understand that, just do your research and you find out. Otherwise, this was a good message both for uh, believers and non-believers. Let me know what you think. Do you have anything to say? Because I don't have much to say. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.